Well, hey there, kids. It's your fretless friend, Uncle Ben Eller. And welcome to a brand new installment of FAQ, the only FAQ series on the internet. That's a fact. And also, welcome to my lovely new Sir Fretless J Bass that I am absolutely in love with and having a blast learning how to play. More on this thing soon. Last week I asked my amazing Patreon community for some questions they'd like to see covered on the next installment of FAQ. And the outreach that I got was seriously amazing. There's so many good questions that you guys have that I'll probably have to break this into like a couple of parts. But before we get to all that cool stuff, you guys know what we gotta do. Let's slide on into Uncle Ben's boombox and talk about what I've been listening to lately. Blame it on this big, beautiful, purple fretless machine, but considering I'm kind of starting on this new path towards fretlessness, it's made me rekindle my love for a Michael Mann ring record called Funk. So for some reason, this record isn't on Spotify, but you can find a full playlist of it right here on YouTube. It's a record that I discovered a really, really long time ago before I even really got serious about playing bass. Uh, I bought the record because it promised to be a progressive instrumental album featuring some of my favorite guitar players like Steve Morris and Alex Skolnick of Testament. But the main attraction on the record is Michael Mannering's absolutely otherworldly bass playing. The guitar side of things on it is great as well. There's some really killer solos and things from Steve Morris and all the other guys that contributed to the album. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's also got Tim Alexander from Primus on drums on at least a couple tracks on there, so that's badass too. So yeah, just search here on YouTube for Michael Manring Thonk, check out the record, and let me know what you think about it. First question here comes from Alexis, who writes, There's a lot of scales, ways to play the guitar, techniques, etc. Is there such thing as having a plan from starting basic scales and whatnot and moving forward? Or does the order not matter? <laughs> So like a lot of guitar players out there, the first scale that I learned how to play was our good friend, the minor pentatonic scale. And that is definitely a great one to use. If you're going to learn one scale, pentatonics are a pretty good one to know because they're used in every single genre of music. It doesn't matter if you're playing metal or blues or jazz or blaz. Somewhere in there you're going to be using a minor pentatonic scale. So if you're going to learn one, that's a great one to start with right there. One of the great things about learning that minor pentatonic scale first is that it's so easy to visualize and play. Even if you don't have like huge hands or anything like that, pretty much everybody can play that scale pretty easily. So that's like a very approachable one that can help you get into soloing and stuff. It's pretty easy to sound good with it. You'll kind of end up accidentally landing on all the right notes anyway when you use that scale for various different reasons. So I'm gonna say that that's a great one to get started with because it can really build up that confidence to show you that like soloing and using scales and stuff like that isn't rocket science. And I'll say too, one of the most important things that I learned about using the minor pentatonic scale right away is where to put it, okay? If you're in a minor key, put that scale right on the root. So if you're playing in the key of B minor, like uh, Comfortably Numb or something like that by Pink Floyd, you're gonna be playing the B minor pentatonic scale. But if you're playing a song that's in a major key, like let's say you're playing a song that's in the key of, uh, let's do A major. If you're playing a song that's all happy and in a major key like that, you need to place that minor pentatonic scale one and a half steps down from the key. Okay, so major key, Minor pentatonic scale goes here, F sharp minor pentatonic in this case. Now that's one of those first lessons that I learned to show me how to use scales in different ways. And it really helped me out a lot and it let me solo in a variety of different keys and different styles and stuff like that. But I'm gonna say if you really, really want to understand music, start with the major scale. I have that whole video that I put out a year or two ago called, This is why you suck at guitar, you don't know the major scale. Watch that right there. Because in Western music theory, the major scale is kind of like the River Nile. It's the source of all of it, you know? The major scale is kind of the default template, and every other scale that's out there is a variation on it in one way or another.
Next question here comes from my patron, Matt, who asks, is it just me or are palm muted alternate picked power chords tough? Can't figure them out and continue hearing a slight delay on the non root notes. So on the fifth and stuff. Either way, any helpful resources to review? It's a great question. So some of the first music that I really got into playing on electric guitar was old school Green Day and Weezer. So power chord central, right? And I experienced exactly what you're talking about because I would hear parts of the songs that had like fast, you know, uh, palm muted power chords like that. And with my standard pick grip that I was using, which is very unextraordinary, I hold a pick pretty much like everybody else, thumb and forefinger, a little bent right there. I would go to do those um, palm muted power chords and it gets really choppy. You can hear it acoustically too where you do kind of hear that slight like slap back between the first note, the root, and the second note, the fifth. And it really just like beats the pickup so hard that it feels like it's about to fly out of your fingers, right? So this is one of those things that I was, I think, lucky enough to kind of intuitively fall into something that works for me, which is using a very different pick grip whenever I'm playing stuff like that. It's not a drastic change. You can kind of do it mid-flight. But for me, it really helps to hold the pick more like this. See that kind of pinch grip that I've got right there? My first finger is a bit straighter. My thumb is also pretty straight, and I'm really holding the pick between the pads of the fingers right there, rather than kind of like the pad of the thumb and the side of the first finger, like I would if I was like single note riffing. I'm very much squeezing the pick lightly between the two finger prints. And I think just having more of the pick exposed to more like skin surface area kind of lets it have a little bit of like a shock absorber effect. Whereas this right here, a lot of that vibration is kind of getting bounced around and moving the pick around in my fingers and stuff. I think this grip right here is kind of the shock absorber. This is also the same grip I use whenever I'm playing like funky, strummy 16th note stuff too. So watch the difference. Here's my regular grip. And I'm gonna switch to See, it's not a big change. Back to regular. Then I just kind of slide it between the two. There's something about holding the pick that way that lets it kind of pass through the strings a little bit more freely. I'm also not holding it super tight. If you hold the pick really rigid while you're trying to go through those, you get that like bicycle card in the spokes kind of sound. It sounds really stiff and you really hear that piece of plastic beating through the strings. It doesn't really sound good. It's also better to use a slightly lighter pick if you're gonna be playing like a lot of that stuff. This is a little bit heavier. This is a 1.14 uh, Dunlop Tortex Flow that I've been using lately. It's a little bit heavy. If I was playing like a Green Day tribute show, I would probably use like a 73 or an 88 or something like that. Something that's a little bit more give to it so it doesn't beat the strings up quite as much. Just try straightening that finger out a little bit. Get to pick more between the pads of the fingers. Again, regular, stretched out. Regular, palm muted power chords. See if that works well for you. I know it's a lifesaver for me and it's still something that I do to this day. Here's a cool movie question from Cece who asks, what is your favorite Rob Zombie movie? Now, those that know me know that I'm a, a horror movie maniac. I even have a weekly horror movie review podcast called Dead and Lovely. That you can listen to on Spotify or any other like podcast service. You can find us on there. Just look at Dead and Lovely. I really enjoy Devil's Rejects a lot. I actually saw that movie before House of a Thousand Corpses, which is kind of ass backwards to see him that way. But I love that movie. I love how just like gritty and nasty it is. The soundtrack stuff in it is killer. There's some fantastic performances, memorable and disturbing kills and stuff in it. I like that one a lot. After I saw that, I watched House of a Thousand Corpses, and there was elements in there that I liked, you know, but it just kind of felt like a huge mishmash of tons of different ideas. And don't get me wrong, some of those ideas are really cool. There's parts of that movie and some of his other flicks that I really enjoyed too. But I'll say that Devil's Rejects is one of the only ones of his that I really just love from start to finish. The Halloween reboot he did, I think is okay. We reviewed that one recently on the show, so be sure to check that out too. But yeah, Devil's Rejects, number one. So there you go, guys. I think we aid the hell out of those cues. Thank you so much to my amazing, loyal, and lovely Patreon community for asking some dope questions. You can ask them too if you support my channel over on the Patreon page. 
at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. I had so much fun answering all these questions that this is going to definitely be a multi-part FAQ installment. So stay tuned soon for even more questions asked by my lovely Patreon community. Thanks again for watching. Less clicking, more picking.